Okay, um, I guess we're talking about the next section, uh, which is the violations of the Code of Professional Conduct. And um, just to read along there. So again, um, that the rules that have been established or promulgated by the Supreme Court of New Jersey state that a lawyer shall not a seek to influence a judge, juror, prospective juror, or other official by means prohibited by law. And that's from the Rules of Professional Conduct, number 3.5. And the law also says, and there's rules governing the courts of the state of New Jersey, that's kind of the Code of Judicial Conduct, um, except that specifically permitted by law or this chapter, a judge may not initiate or consider ex parte any evidence or communications continue issues of fact or law in a pending or impending proceeding. Where ex parte communications are unavoidable, the judge shall advise all parties of communications as soon as possible thereafter. Uh, so on July 4th, 2022, I filed a order to show cause on very similar issues that I state in this petition. It was my expectation that such application would be heard by Judge Gaida after returning from his time off. In addition to the good faith petition for the reasons set forth herein, the order to show cause was filed as a follow through on a letter to Ms. Helen Ducan on June 30th, 2022. It was important that after communicating the consequence for behavior, those consequences be carried out for noncompliance. As such, when Ms. Ducan induced the court to threaten to fall judgment if the sum of $24,000 was not immediately paid to her, as opposed to acting rationally, in the interest of judicial economy to settle the dispute among the parties, it was necessary for me to follow through on the consequence stated on the June 30th letter. It is like dealing with a child. If a parent clearly communicates consequences but fails to follow through, the deleterious behaviors that need to be decreased will escalate. It is like training a child that they can act without impunity or repercussion. In the dual spirit of good faith application for relief from immediate and irreparable harms and the need to firmly provide follow through, I filed the order to show cause on August 4th, 2022. Without having seen the correspondence referenced by Judge Melikion, it has come to my attention that Ms. Ducan made an unlawful communication to influence Judge Melikion. An email was sent to Judge Melikion uh, 2.15. 9 p.m. on August 4th, when the order show cause was scheduled to begin at 2.30 p.m. And I show the emails. Um, I actually don't know what that letter was uh, that Ms. Ducan sent to Judge Melikion. I have not received a copy of it, and I still have not received a copy of it. Um, apparently, um, it wasn't the first letter that she had sent that day. There was another letter that she sent, and the email says that um, it is actually replacing uh, that initial letter, um, and I will uh, point out where that is um, here. You can see that there was a, the only reason I found out was because the judge's clerk, Kamala Merrick, um, replied to her email um, from earlier uh, when attaching the signed and filed order. Um, <laughs> It does say that it was, I was also CC to this. Um, however, um, I did not get a copy of it. Um, and this was sent at 2.59, nor really was I checking email. I was waiting eagerly for the um, the court hearing to begin. Um, it was supposed to start at 2.30. Uh, I don't think it had started at that time. Uh, she writes, I am hereby withdrawing my earlier correspondence to the court. Ask the court to kindly disregard the same and rather review the attached letter instead. And she writes uh, her signature. Um, so that's how I gleaned that there's uh, earlier correspondence um, and that that was being withdrawn and that they would look at this one now. Um, and this is the order for the denial. I was able to glean um, what this letter might have said um, based on what the judge said at the beginning of this hearing. Um, so um, I would say that that's where I was able to um, come up with this information. Uh, first, the correspondence states that my order show clause was procedurally deficient because it did not include a brief, which cites a you know, legal brief um, 
the rationale from this case about you know, issuing injunctive orders. However, in plaintiff's prior petitions for an order to show cause, and as recently as the ones that she filed on March 14th, 2022, and May 5th, 2022, plaintiff's counsel failed to follow the procedural rules, which would make her applications equally deficient. Second, Judge Melikion was uh, errored when it was he was influenced by Ms. Lucan's ex parte correspondence when it ruled that the issues raised in defendant's order to show cause were deferred to trial. Um, and basically, um, it's a form that they fill out that you know, he's denying it because it's not immediate and irreparable, and also because all of the issues uh, should be deferred to trial. Um, in, in addition to statements on the record by Judge Gaida, uh, the court order denying the defendant's order to show cause on June 23rd, 2022, does not make the same finding. Uh, the fact pattern is so similar to that both court orders cannot be correct. One or both court orders must be an error. Um, this actually, I actually don't have a copy of the written order to show cause, so I don't know for sure whether or not that second box um, is indeed checked or not. Um, and that's actually something I want to see and ask for. Um, see so here, this other um, was put in. Um, and to my knowledge, um, other order to show causes that were similar to this were denied, um, but didn't have that. Um, but I don't actually don't have a record um, written on that exact issue right now. So there I'm definitely, um, I guess, making a valid um, educated assumption. Um, but at the end, they could, the document probably hasn't been actually created yet. So for that reason, um, when they do create a document, um, it probably won't be dated the actual date um, that the order should have been issued, um, but we have a, diff have a later file date um, on it. Um, so that happened. Um, and then in the alternative, um, perhaps thinking of it in the most liberal possible way, uh, maybe he just thought that, you know, the trial was going to end on Thursday. Um, and for that reason, um, he should just, um, you know, just say deny it and let the other judge decide. That's why I wrote in the alternative, Judge Melikion did not have the benefit of the information before the court today on the protracted trial schedule that is anticipated. Nor was the defendant as a pro se litigant afforded the same solicitude given to a litigant that retains an attorney. Um, basically, I should be treated the same, no, no better, no worse. Either way, the matter is before this court, which can elucidate to the parties how it will proceed on the issue of unsupervised parenting time. Uh, as stated above, there needs to be some consequence for Ms. Duquesne's behavior to rehabilitate her practice of the law and carrying out the attorney's code of professional conduct, for which she is bound. The defendant has attempted to initiate an investigation by applying, the, applying to the Office of Attorney Ethics. However, because this litigation is still pending. The OAE has declined to docket the complaint. However, the court has the power to order such investigations prior to the conclusion of trial. Um, the court actually said in response to this request that it does not have that power or it's not something that it does. Um, and I think that that was an error. Um, I actually think that that's the only remedy that uh, I was able to have because the OAE uh, declined to investigate or to docket it or even make note of it, um, that basically means that the only person in my situation to get relief from um, if I was seeing some unethical behavior was to ask the court to do it. Um, so not only um, did they have the power, but um, they really they were the only um, person um, that could, um, you know, order that investigation to help try to curtail some of those practices. So um, I paid fifty one fifty um, in order to file the second order to show cause in less than a week. So I write, even a nominal consequence such as paying the court fees associated with filing the second order to show cause within a week should be instituted. Some sanctions need to be some sanction needs to be implemented, or certain attorneys will continue to violate the code of professional conduct again and again. The order to show cause could have easily be adjourned to. April 11, 22, which was my initial expectation. Um, so, you know, again, this is going to be included in the order to show cause that I will be um, filing against, um, sorry, the, the grievance um, for the attorney um, 
ethics, um, but it's also going to actually create a, a review for judicial conduct. Um, and, you know, so first you just the this ethics with kind of website there where you can get information and actually file one. Um, and then there's also a this. Not I mean. Um, so the review committee from the review to be able to initiate um you know some type of um, investigation over here, uh, how to file a complaint. Here uh, it names two ways. So there's an advisory committee on judicial conduct, and I will have to be reporting uh, Judge Melikian for ex parte communications for receiving them, um, and then you know notifying them and, and really being influenced by it. Um, I do have one that I will be filing against Judge Gaida um, for the. Um, advisory committee to investigate, but I'm not going to do that until after the conclusion of the divorce proceeding. All right. Uh, so the next up is going to be the final section, um, which is really, um, you know, why I feel my parental rights were so violated. Um, you know, in the sense that my wife um, decided our therapist for my daughter would be really without any, you know, consultation. Uh, but really, you know, as I was studying this evidence um, that you know, really need to look at the most obvious explanation uh, before you go to those things. So see you on the next round. Thanks.